Hello, you multi medieval medicines, and thank you to Stuart Fenwick for that malt mention. I'm Ralphie in the Bothy with a couple of excellent single malt whiskies because this is a whiskey review channel and this is Ralphie Review, the channel review 1024 extras. X means extra content, extra perspective, extra sharing of experience and opinion on the whiskies I review. And the whiskies I review are the whiskies I buy. Because quite simply, if I was in the position where I was looking for distillers to supply the whiskies that I review, let me tell you what would happen. I would get the mediocre whiskies which are struggling to sell in the supermarket and the distillers need to find every and any which way to promote their lacklustre, heavily chill filtered 40% caramel loaded product. And I have to say, as a whiskey reviewer, um, I would find that very demoralising and pointless and I don't think my channel would last much longer. But I'm not in that position. I am buying, thanks to the uh, Google AdSense, which is a modest income from the channel, and also for the support of my Patreon subscribers over in my Patreon channel, Ralphie, where I give live streams and additional content every week, live streams once a month. Um, I have got a budget where I can go out and buy what I like. To review for you, which is why I, I am buying whiskey that the distillers simply don't need to give to journalists and influencers um, because it sells itself. It's good quality and it, I need to keep my morale up in this channel presenting good stuff to you otherwise I'd be going into a sort of tailspin. And there are, let's face it, for you regular Ralphie regulars, um, there are times where I've got a little bit negative because I've had a succession of rather average whiskies, which I know from the experience in my palate could have been a lot better presented. And it really concerns me that there's a significant sector of the Scotch whisky industry resting on the laurels of their reputation and not trying hard enough to source good quality casks and make good quality flavoursome single malt whiskey to bottle because at the end of the day though it's a waste of time spending a fortune on marketing to try and paper over the cracks because you haven't spent less money on actually getting the product right in the first place and then allowing the internet to find it promote it present it and endorse it on your on, on the distiller's behalf completely free of charge. Hey, it's a plan. I've got that situation right now. A local barley, seven year old Port Charlotte from Isla. It's a beautiful whiskey. It is stunningly good. It's one of the best whiskies I've had this year so far in 2024. And the only reason I bought it was I saw it on the shelf of the shop. I lifted up the bottle. I shouted over at the corner. Oi, oi guys, any good, any good. They gave me the thumbs up. They gave me the thumbs up. And that was it. I bought it. I bought it. You can buy it for about £80. Sure, you'll get cheaper whiskey. You can easily get cheaper whiskey. Most of the rubbish is cheaper. Not all of it. Sometimes they overprice the rubbish and then sell you on the illusion that it's amazing and famous and marvellous and wonderful. But good luck to you. It's your responsibility, your journey, malt mates, to sort out the difference, to navigate navigate the high seas of whiskiness to establish what is the best value in return for smell of smell and taste for the money you're paying for your malt moments. I'm here to help. So I have uh, a whiskey which my whiskey of the year, I've reviewed it in 2023, I'm reviewing this 2024, very, very closely, closely related, same distillery, same recipe, same provenance, um, same water when they were, were brought, cut down for bottling because this whiskey is bottled at the distillery. That's important. It's provenance. 
they're looking, this is the standard barley, 10 year old, bottled at 50%. This is the seven year old local barley, richer grain, richer texture, richer delivery, but they're both rich, they're both excellent. But there is a slight difference, and I want to take this opportunity now, just in a side-by-side -side comparison. And this is the way we really, really learn malt mates. This is where we really get to know our skills, is by doing straight side-by-side -side comparisons where we compare and contrast directly using our nose and our taste. The 10-year-old. It's got dark plum notes, which the seven-year-old does not have. This has more cask influence, and it shows. And there's a little touch. They're both primarily bourbon cask matured. But this has got something else in it. It could be white port. It could be sauternes. It might even be a little bit of sherry cask, refill sherry cask. I'm uh, not quite sure, but I'm noticing immediately in the nose there is a difference. And it's not just the three years difference in age. There's most certainly an oak, an oakiness in the ten year old that's not manifesting in the seven. The seven initially is crisper and lighter and softer, but you can f notice on the nose the graininess, the, the complexity of the barley, which isn't so prominent in the 10 year old because it's got more cask influence, driving the influence of the experience. Taste. 10 year old, beautiful. Fruity, lemon juice, grapefruit rind, aromatic plum notes um slight cranberry note in the background some dried apricot pickled pineapple very soft banana and gingeriness minty gingeriness now how about and feel free to have a wee sip of water between glasses just to cleanse the palate the grain, the local barley, three years younger. Whole different flake, freight. Excuse me. I better give it another three or four seconds. Oh, juicy, juicy, juicy. A whole different flavour composition. The signatures there, the characters there, the identity, the, the two of the same family it really shows immediately but the local barley has got a, a fuller almost biscuit slight kind of cake you know these dry dipping biscuits you get in Italy that you put in your coffee and they're too crunchy to eat them without dipping them in your coffee um, and they have a kind of cornflower cereal note a rich creamy textured cereal note but not sweet that's what I'm getting in there but the, the, the sour pineapple, pickled pineapple, gingery note, soft banana, the banana a little more prominent, the cerealiness, the biscuitiness, it's just simply more engaging and it's representing the familiarity of the signature of Port Charlotte and it's doing it beautifully. And this is how we learn and this is part of the fun that once we gain some experience we no longer restrict ourselves to one large glass of single malt. We'll get two smaller glasses and we'll go between them and as we do so because our palate is learning and fine-tuning constantly purely through experience, it's just amazing what we start to pick up and we get an enormous sense of satisfaction from the experience and also expertise. We become more discerning customers, we become more knowledgeable, some distilleries really appreciate the calibre of our feedback, some other distilleries 
They don't want to know. They actually find it a bit of a nuisance. They would rather we were simply passive consumers and knew our place. But the thing is, the passive consumer is on a budget and a health kick. They're cutting out alcohol now, aren't they? That's why all the pubs are shutting down. Therefore, the whisky industry should really spend a little bit more and invest a little bit more in looking after their genuine customers who know the industry, know the characters in the industry, know the characters in the bottle, know the identity and value of what Scotch whisky is and other quality spirits and continue to invest in that on a regular basis. The industry should never, ever downgrade and ignore these people. That is a very big mistake because the globe, the world, when they're learning about whiskey, they may read a book now and again, not very often, but where they're really learning is off their search engines. When they put in searches, when they watch the videos, and when they read the blogs, that is where the real information and the real embassy work is actually happening. And there you have it. I'm Ralphie. Hope you've enjoyed this little extras. 1,024 extras. I'm Ralphie. I've been happy, very happy to present it to you because it's genuinely interesting and it's a lot of fun and it's a real treat. I'm not going to guzzle this. These two whiskies will last me the rest of the night. In fact, at some point, I might pour them half and half into a third glass. Why? Simple, just to see where, where it takes me. It's part of the adventure in smell and taste. And there you have it. I'm Ralphie. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.